This is part two of the COVID-19 testing laboratory planning and design. So we'll start with the design philosophies in uh, designing a laboratory. So a laboratory should reduce risk with a recombination of redundant administrative and engineering controls. And it should be keep, keep it simple and safe. No? So these two principles, I have taken this from uh, our previous uh, lecturers uh, when I uh, attended lecture about uh, designing uh, BSL-3, animal BSL-3 and uh, BSL-3 laboratories in uh, uh, Malaysia. No? So it's, it's from our speakers, Dr. Chua Tech Min and Mr. Trom Tred. Trom Tred uh, so in a laboratory, it is a place equipped for experimental study in a science for testing and analysis. It's a place is providing study for experimentation, observation, or practice in a field of study. So as you can see in these pictures, these are uh, pictures of laboratories uh, that, are, uh, that meets the uh, standards of the Philippines. So how to get started in designing a laboratory? So uh, this is a, a general principle in designing a laboratory, not it's also applied to uh, designing a COVID-19 so laboratory. What is the function of the laboratory? You need to identify the primary function. Uh, what is the expected, expected size of the laboratory? The expected size is the available size or the space that you can uh, build your lab or uh, the available size or space of the lot that you can build your particular laboratory. Uh, number three is the budget. How much will the owner be willing to, to spend in building the lab? How much uh, are you targeting? You know, how, much, how much is the target cost for the laboratory? Uh, what is the available funds? You no. Know? Uh, and number four is the location. No? Uh, is it suitable for that particular lab? No? Uh, is, it, uh, is the location safe? Okay. Uh, is lo the location safe from earthquake, from flood? No? Is the location safe from heavy traffic? Because sometimes if it's, a, it's an area that's too crowded, you know, it may not be suitable to build that type of laboratory in a crowded area. What are the available materials? So this is very crucial in the specification that was established by the standards like the NIH, the WHO, the DOH standards in the laboratories. No? Is this available in that particular region? No? Uh, are those materials available? If not, what are the materials available? And how can you meet the standard based on the available material? So those are the factors that you need to consider. Another is the end user profile. No? So what are, who will be using that particular lab? Who are the persons that will use the laboratory? So what is the particular knowledge that that persons are, uh, have? No? And are they properly trained? So those are people, a particular uh, factors that you need to consider because if they are trained and they are uh, knowledgeable about the laboratory, they can help you design that laboratory. In other cases, uh, uh, most of the time, you know, people that want to build a laboratory, they are knowledgeable about that laboratory. But in this case, this COVID-19 laboratory, this was a new uh, laboratory that was being built and some hospitals doesn't have knowledge on how to build this laboratory. So they only rely on the design based on the standards that are being issued by the WHO. So uh, there are little, there is, there are a lot of inputs that are being considered based on the WHO standard and a little input only from the end user. So what is the future expansion? So do you need to expand it later on? Do you need, how many tests are you targeting in the near future? So if that maybe now you are only doing uh, 250 tests, but later on you need to, to meet a thousand tests per day. So those are the future expansion that we need to consider. 
uh, what are the biosafety level enhancement that you will be including in your design? No? So what are the enhancement that you want to, to uh, include and what are the uh, available uh, equipment that you can install no, to enhance your, your laboratory? Some enhancement like biometrics, like uh, sensors, no? so th those are enhancement that you can include in your design and those are enhancements that you can uh, uh, introduce to your client. No? Or sometimes you can uh, introduce enhancement in materials no? if it's available. So what are the guidelines that encompasses the design? No? So like the CDC, WHO, NIH, no? uh, DOH. So those are the guidelines that you need to consider. So you need to study guidelines, uh, guidelines that are related to your your uh, laboratory and then study if the local guidelines uh, meets those international guidelines so that you can uh, suggest things that are uh, that may contribute to the um, uh, performance of your building based on international standards. So uh, another factor in uh, designing a laboratory should be cleanable, you know, the cleanability of the facility. So the laboratory should be designed so that it can be easily clean. And bench top must be seamless and one piece designed to prevent contamination. So laminated bench tops are not suitable. You know? So if you will laminate it manually, so that, that is not a suitable material. So in cases that you will use a laminate, your laminate should be uh, laboratory grade laminates. So penetration for electrical, spalming and other consideration must be completely permanently and sealed. So in cases that you will be creating uh, outlets, switches, lighting outlets, so you need to make sure that those are sealed. You know? Those are sealed that insects or ants or uh, small insects cannot penetrate you know, inside your laboratory through those uh, uh, fixtures. If the bench abuts a wall, it must be coved or have a box splash against the wall. So if you have a uh, table that is uh, of the, on the side of a wall, you should put a box slash or a cove no? uh, to prevent the spillage of uh, anything at the back of the cabinet. Uh, walls should be painted and washable and hard non-porous paint. No? So you need to make sure that the walls are, are painted uh, properly and should be uh, non-porous. Spaces between benches, cabinets, and equipment must be accessible for cleaning and allow for servicing of equipment. So spaces between cabinets. No? So you need to make sure that the cabinets uh, uh, are, are cleanable. The back of the cabinets, the under cabinets are cleanable so that you can uh, make or do a preventive maintenance or regular maintenance. Oh, and the ma in terms of maintenance, all biohazardous material within the laboratory facility must be clearly labeled. Everything in the facility should be that are uh, hazardous or biohazardous should be labeled. So all work surfaces must be decontaminated at least once daily and after any spill or viable material and uh, all infectious liquid or solid waste must be decontaminated before disposal. Use gloves while working in the laboratory. Uh, do not touch other surfaces uh, with same gloves that you, you use for cleaning. So in, 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 in the preventive maintenance or the maintenance uh, uh, day or the maintenance uh, procedures, you, you should not use the same gloves in, ha in touching other uh, like door handles, elevator buttons, because uh, you might bring the, the virus outside the laboratory. So minimize the amount of airborne dust created during sweeping activities. No? So um, in, in, in cleaning, you need to use uh, damp cloth no? uh, instead of using a broom, or maybe you can use uh, uh, a good vacuum cleaner. So miss the area with Lysol spray or similar product before sweeping or using a HEPA vacuum. Wash the floor of the laboratory with either one, one is to six bleach solution or Lysol, IC, and water. So these are, these are common SOPs in cleaning the laboratories. 
So in terms of pest management, sanitation and housekeeping should be considered. Proper storage system, trash can can be used, can be can trash can type and use should be uh, properly uh, uh, identified or properly labeled, no? And uh, the right type of trash can should be the one that you will install on specific areas. Trash handling protocol. So in terms of uh, handling the waste, you, you need to have an SOP or standard operating procedure in handling waste. And in terms of uh, structural deficiency, so in the harborage or pest entry. So these are also one of the consideration of the management of pests. So you need to prevent areas that pests can enter or pests can leave. You know? So you need to uh, clean everything uh, in, during the preventive maintenance. And you need to make sure that there are no gaps or crevices or holes that pests can enter your lab. Integrated pest management, another one. So you need to be you need to have a pest management uh, procedures or a a third party that can uh, regularly uh, this uh, regularly spray you no know, uh, pest control chemicals you no know, in your uh, outside the laboratory so that the this pest will not enter your laboratories. So uh, proper equipment selection and equipment planning is also one factor. You need to uh, position laboratory table near windows so that you can have natural light, uh, place biosafety cabinet away from exits and traffic. So this is in order to prevent uh, uh, hazards that are near the exits. Uh, provide eye wash in negative pressure rooms. In cases that you have a negative pressure room, you need to provide, provide an eye wash or in a sink. Uh, you need to use hands-free sink you know, in, in cases that you can buy those. Uh, safety showers, uh, if available. Emergency power, you need to make sure that you have emergency power. Emergency lighting. And... Uh, Panel board should be outside the negative pressure room. So this is one principle that you need to uh, follow. And electrical outlets above the laboratory table. So if there is a laboratory table, the outlet should be above the lab table, not under the lab table or not inside the lab table. It should be above the lab table. And electrical outlets like for biosafety cabinet, fume hood freezers should be 60 centimeters above the floor for easily access you know, for you to to pull out or plug in the the cap the few boots or freezers in case they, they need maintenance no or in case of emergencies no you can easily reach to those uh, outlets no so those are the uh, position 60 centimeter above from the floor so containment you provide room for exhaust no so it means that you need to provide space for the ducting no? and uh, exhaust with HEPA filter. So this is one principle that you are you, you should be using for biosafety level 2 or 2 plus no? and 3 or 4. No? So autoclave exhaust, no? if in, the, in case that you have an autoclave inside your uh, facility, you need to provide exhaust for that, those autoclaves so that for that for to prevent the, the, the heat no? spreading inside your uh, laboratory. Window should be sealed seal lighting fixtures and seal conduit penetrating pipes no so if there are pipes penetrating your walls so you need to seal those pipes perform tasks inside the biosafety cabinet so in case that you will be uh, 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 the act, uh, uh, inactivating or uh, uh, extracting rna or dna you should put it you should do it inside the biosafety cabinet so performance requirement these are the temperature should be at least uh, should be at the range of 20 to 22 degrees centigrade. Sound level should be 60 decibel max, 60 decibels maximum. Humidity is relative humidity is 50 plus 5, and pressure should be ideal is negative 15 pascals. So this is the ideal pressurization for negative 15 negative 15 pascals. Ambient illumination should be. Uh, 800 to 1,000 lux and task illumination should be 1,100 lux. No? So you need to 
provide in, enough uh, lighting or proper lighting on tables and proper lighting for uh, near uh, areas that you will walk or near areas that you will uh, perform tasks. Uh, laboratory design safety issues. Uh, uh, we have safety issues on aerosols, no? like uh, uh, in performing tasks, sometimes you produce aerosols, so those are safety features. Uh, another one is uh, the overcrowding. If you have too many people inside the lab, you need to address this uh, overcrowding. So you need to provide enough space for people to work inside that laboratory, not too small, so that people will not bump into each other. Infestation and rodent, these are safety issues inside the laboratories no? in, in case that uh, this uh, uh, pest or going... Uh, uh, access inside, have access inside the laboratory. Uh, unauthorized entrance, these are also laboratory safety issues. No, if people go inside your lab uh, without proper authorization and without proper training, so you need to uh, have locks or safety uh, access controls before so that people will not enter your laboratory immediately or an unauthorized entrance. Uh, workflow, so these are issues in laboratories. So if you don't position your uh, equipments properly, so your workflow will be uh, disrupted with, uh, with the improper locations of uh, equipments. Changing room design. So this is another problem in laboratories. Sometimes they don't provide uh, enough space to people to don and doff or space for people, the doning and the doffing space is not planned properly. There's not enough space in the doning and doffing areas or there are no uh, trash bins or there are no wash areas. No? So those are problems in the changing room. And another is the waste disposal. Okay. So biosafety, it's the combination of principles, technologies, practices, and measures that are implemented when handling biohazardous materials. This is to achieve the following, protect personnel from unintentional exposure. So this is one principle of the biosafety, is to protect un the people for unintentional exposure to the virus or to the bacteria or to the hazard. Contain the biological agents during the manipulation. So that is one thing also for biosafety, that the, in cases that you are doing hazardous work, it's contained inside the laboratory and contained inside the biosafety cabinet. So another one is to prevent environmental release. No? So in, in cases that you will have exosystem, you need to make sure that the exosystem is filtered through a HEPA filter. Okay? So biosafety levels or BSLs, no, a, a biosafety level is the level of biocontainment precaution required to isolate dangerous biological agents in an enclosed facility. So the United States for Central Disease Control and Prevention categorize virus, various diseases in levels of biohazard levels. No, uh, level one being minimum risk and level four being extreme risk. So laboratories and other facilities are categorized in BSL or biosafety level 1 to 4 or P1 to P4 or, or for short pathogen or protection level. Okay, so there are different protection level P1 to P4 or BSL1 to BSL4. So each level represents a combination of uh, lab practices, techniques, safety equipments, and lab facilities. It is designed to minimize release and exposure. So biosafety level one is suitable for work involving well-characterized agents not known to cause disease in healthy adult humans and the minimal potential hazards to the environment, to laboratory personnel and environment. So this means that the laboratory that we are designing, it's BSL2, right? 
So BSL-2 laboratories are laboratories, no? Uh, level 2 infections are not considered to be a serious hazard, no? They are moderate individual risk and limited community risk. So BSL-3, BSL-2 BSL are laboratory with that, that, uh, that, uh, 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 are, that these viruses are being uh, studied or tested on this laboratory, the BSL-2, the, the viruses are measles, uh, salmonella, taxoplama, hepatitis. Those are uh, ba, ba, uh, viruses that are studied on a BSL-2 laboratory. So, the, but in, uh, in this case, the, the level of protection for this BSL-2 laboratories, we have the practices in TIC techniques for BSL-3, which is uh, we have a controlled access, decontamination waste, decontamination of lab clothing, and baseline serum samples of lab personnel. So these are the practices of BSL-3 that is included in the BSL-2 design that, we, that the COVID-19 laboratory is requiring. Okay? So, so that is why the WHO or even the uh, uh, DOH is requiring a BSL-2 laboratory with BSL-3 practices and techniques. So this, this uh, uh, table shows you the practices and techniques of the BSL-3. So the BSL-2 compared to a BSL-3, these are the uh, level of requirements for a BSL-2 compared to a BSL-3. As you can see, the BSL-2, the inward airflow is only desirable, but in the BSL-3, it's a requirement. So the difference is the anteroom and shower. In the BSL-2, there is no need for a shower, anteroom with shower, but there is a uh, requirement for an autoclave. It's a desirable, and the biosafety, level, biosafety cabinet is also a desirable requirement for a BSL-2. Sandali lang ah, may tumatawag na naman. Sandali, bababa ako sandali ah. Ah, sorry. I will, I will be... So, we will now go to biosafety level 2. So, biosafety level 2 would, uh, uh, would cover work with agents associated with human disease, in the other words, pathogenic or infectious organism, posing moderate hazard. Access to lab is more controlled than biosafety level 1 facilities. Immunocompromise or immunosuppressed and other persons with increased risk infection may be denied admittance at the discretion of the laboratory director. So there are certain uh, controls, no, admissive controls that are involved on biosafety level two, like persons that will enter the laboratory and the agents that will be handled on the laboratory or pathogens or infectious organisms. So there are this, uh, these administrative controls are, are uh, identified. No? So you cannot work on uh, agents that are posing high hazard. So those are controls that are enumerated. So you cannot go, do high hazard agent uh, inactivations on biosafety level two. So this is a design of a biosafety level two, biosafety level two laboratory. So uh, the biosafety two level laboratory is, uh, it has a autoclave outside, a shower, trash bins, no? uh, lockable doors, uh, biosafety cabinets inside. And uh, the, these have none, these, the chairs are covered with non-fabric material and uh, I wash available negative airflow and recirculation recommended and door closed when work is in practice. So these are the requirements in a biosafety level two, not level one plus. No? So we do in a, in a biosafety level three, this is a biosafety level three, there is a two door entry for an anteroom air lock. So you can see there's an anteroom air lock as for an air uh, BSL three. And there are easy cleanable surface walls 
and the uh, cove floors and the seal penetration and using flush to ceiling, hands-free sink near exit door and eye wash, eye shower station. So uh, as I enumerated earlier, you know, the design of the biosafety level two for COVID is uh, is a biosafety level two plus. So some of the the uh, features of the biosafety level three can be seen on the biosafety level two plus for COVID nineteen testing laboratory. So what what are those? You can see those. Uh, I I was shower station, the seal penetration, the flash uh, lighting flash to ceiling so those are some of the biosafety level three that can be seen on the biosafety level two plus so it also has a pass through auto, uh, the pass through autoclave is not can be not it's not a requirement for the biosafety level two plus uh, laboratory so the facility goals no we, we have the facility design over you have the goals to separation of hazardous work from public spaces like isolation of lab to prevent accidental release. No? And you have a controlled airflow. So the airflow within the, the environment should be controlled mechanically or electronically controlled. So uh, what are the objectives? No? The goal is for controlled airflow are the following. It should, should, should it be a protection of uh, product and personnel? No, versus the product or the personnel, or a combination of protection of both product and personnel. Or it should, it should be, it, it, could it be negative pressure? And what is the air exchange per hour? So these are the issues of controlled airflow for the uh, facility design, no? so the review of your facility. So if you're designing a facility, these are the questions that you should, you should ask yourself in designing the, the, the laboratory. So... Under the design review, you need to, to review the security, life, and safety elements like the fire rated door, the emergency lighting, the intrusion alarms like motion detectors or restricted access like locks, key card, or lock boxes, or background checks on personnel. So sometimes you will not allow persons that are not allowed to go inside the, the facility because of its uh, background or uh, it may pose hazard to the community, uh, or he or she may pose hazard to the community. So another is uh, installation of the biohazard sign. No? So this is the international biohazard sign or warning symbol must be placed on the doors of the rooms where microorganisms or risk group two or higher risk groups are handled. Only authorized persons should be allowed to enter the laboratory working areas. Laboratory doors should be kept closed. So children should not be allowed or allowed, should not be allowed or allowed to enter to the laboratory areas. So should not be authorized or allowed to enter the laboratory areas. And this access to animal houses should be especially Authorized, no animals should be allowed to, to be admitted other than involved in the work of the laboratory. So these are the the uh, the reasons why you put a biohazard sign, no, uh, in on front of a, a laboratory. So this uh, this biohazard sign came from the uh, uh, this was uh, design designed to to warn you no know, people you no know, not to enter this uh, facility uh, and. As you can see, the, the biohazard sign also indicates the biosafety level of the laboratory. The principal uh, investigator or the person, principal person who is who's, who's handling the laboratory, uh, what you will do in case of emergency and what are the uh, phone numbers. No? And sometimes you can put other uh, uh, inf informations no, on the biohazard sign. So the BSL2 plus lab design elements, what are the requirements? So these are the requirements for the COVID testing lab. So we have the negative airflow into the lab and the uh, most negative air at the rear of the lab and 12 air exchanges per hour in negative pressure room. So these are requirements that were enumerated by the WHO and the uh, uh, CDC and the DOH um, 
uh, DOH guidelines, RATM. So we have a uh, pressure differential, uh, air pressure differential of, of uh, negative uh, 0.5 inch, no? and dedicated exhaust pad, exhaust supply interlock, and uh, exhaust velocity should be 3,000 uh, feet per meter away from intakes and people. So you need to, to these are all should be measured by mechanical engineers should, and these should be all designed by mechanical engineers. No? This, uh, uh, and uh, if you will be specializing in, in uh, uh, these types of room, you can, uh, you can uh, identify uh, the locations and the uh, uh, locations of those exhausts and the positioning of doors and uh, equipment based on the exhaust system. So direct exhaust and recirculation. And another design is the allow uh, airflow monitor gauge or the uh, magnetic meters or the key card or lock access key, key card or lock access uh, uh, features. And the, the door should be self-closing with the, the door closers, access features from outside the space, um, door sign at the entry, like the biohazard sign, Class two BC BSC cabinet, so you need to put put a class two biosafety cabinet, canopy exhaust over the biosafety cabinet, and means of communication to our areas outside the laboratory. So this is very crucial in uh, in safety that people inside the laboratory can communicate to other people outside the laboratory without using the the, the without using the cell phones no? because it's not it is not it's you are not required to use your cell phones inside the lab because uh, the cell phone may be contaminated and uh, you need to decontaminate the cell phone later so uh, you need to use other means of communication like intercom or uh, two-way radio that are fixed inside the laboratory so this is the uh, samples of uh, uh, airflow meters or magnetic airflow meters. No, uh, there are preparation procedures in entering a, the laboratory. You need to verify the airflow flow before entering. Uh, enter the empty room, close outer door, then sign in logbook, then put the PPE, then check your supplies, and then enter the laboratory. These are preparation procedures. No, why do we need to to uh, show you this preparation procedure so that you these preparation procedures are done before entering and inside the donning and doffing areas and before entering the main lab. So you need to provide areas for these activities so that these activities will be uh, properly done before entering the laboratory. So what are the engineering controls? Engineering controls are the primary barriers the mechanical devices that minimum exposures and must be applied before work practices and personal protective equipment. So you need to put these engineering controls before the PPE and redundant, you need to put a redundant power system like uh, generators and interior partition must be floor to floor height. These are engineering controls. Pass box for room to room transfers of specimen. So, there should be a pass box to transfer the specimen from room to room. People should not transfer the spe specimen outside the hallway. And installation of magnetic gauges for monitoring of room pressure. So you need to put magnetic gauges on pressurized room. So these are the specification of the doors. So doors, uh, each door of the room should must have a view panel like this one. Bends are prohibited in laboratory doors. So there should no be should there should there should be no bends on the laboratory doors. Door width must be at least one meter to accommodate entry and exit of equipment. So that is the specification of door width because of the equipment entering the door, the, the, the laboratory. Metal door powdered coated finish with tempered glass view panel is uh, a must. No? The window should be fixed, tempered or safety glass, and glass should be properly sealed to achieve airtight and watertight. So this is a, a sample of a window you know, that is sealed, airtight, and tempered. These are samples of uh, 
doors. No? As you can see, there are door closers. This, this, you can see these door closers are is on the outside. This, this means that this door pulls out. If these doors, the door, door closers are in the inside, this door means it's, it should if you push this door in. So the architectural consideration, wall should be smooth, painted and easy to clean, made of sturdy materials, no cracks, no holes, minimum 2.6 floor to floor height, antibacterial property can withstand negative Pascal pressure. So this is very important for the walls because if your walls are not properly attached, it may collapse because of the negative pressure or it may pop out because of the positive pressure. So the ceiling shall be smooth, painted, and easy to clean, made of sturdy material. So most of the time or all the time, the, the, the wall type is similar to the ceiling type. So if your wall is made of uh, uh, metal, your ceiling is also made of metal. So no cracks, no holes, or ne on negative pressure for rooms and can withstand negative 15 pascals. So the, the structural... Uh, connections or the attachment of the ceiling to the frame of your uh, room should be properly detailed so that it can withstand the negative pressure uh, air. So the flooring should be one piece non pervious and with covings at the wall. As you can see there are covings on the wall and should be antibacteria and anti-static property. This can be achieved by using of uh, uh, glue, held that vinyl flooring, epo or epoxy coated concrete slab, or other materials. No? And as you can see in this figure, this is an epoxy coating, coated slab, uh, coated, uh, I know this is a vinyl, rolled vinyl flooring. These are uh, uh, metal walls. These are fixed windows. These are uh, surface mounted, uh, uh, lighting fixtures uh, with uh, proper uh, uh, sealed, sealed uh, lighting fixtures. Uh, this is a standard laboratory furniture. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the person who is inspecting the, the laboratory. Uh, and uh, the six, each laboratory must contain a sink for hand washing. Uh, elbow or electronic sensing faucet are recommended, particularly for biological agents and highly toxic chemicals. In this case, this is a uh, hand. Uh, this is a uh, electronic sensing faucet. Laboratory six shall have lips that protect the sink. So this, as you can see, the laboratory has lips. No, this protects the this, the the spillage of water to the floor. No, so another uh, feature of this uh, laboratory table. No? As you can see, the the under uh, under cabinet of the laboratory are all cleanable. No? So you can easily clean. The, uh, uh, the, the space underneath the cabinets. So this is a, this is a section of a laboratory uh, uh, furniture. So you can see the, those are the standard heights and the standard widths of the laboratory furnitures. So uh, it should be smooth, non-porous surface, uh, resist to absorption of liquids and harsh effects of disinfectants. So there are different types of uh, laboratory furnitures you know, that or laboratory furniture tops. No? We have the uh, epoxy resins. We have the uh, 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 solid, uh, solid, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, stones, or sometimes it's uh, 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 phenolic boards. So depending, or sometimes it's stainless, depending on the different types of uh, laboratory procedures. No? But in this case, this is a, uh, biological laboratory, all the tops are all uh, phenolic uh, resin tops or epoxy resins. So the, 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 the chair should not be fabric coated. It should be uh, hard plastic or non-porous uh, uh, material. So these are the uh, modules in laboratory furnitures. No, this is one one module. No, as you can see, the the the, the Distance from one cabinet to one cabinet is five feet, and from the edge of one cabinet to one cabinet, it's about 3.2 meters uh, distance. No? So, uh, based on this module, you can now check on the designs of each room based on the distance per module. So, you can properly distance the one furniture to one furniture and properly uh, 
create a good uh, lab wall-to-wall -wall distance. So furnitures uh, and, and locations of uh, furniture designs and location exit paths no? or furniture must be sturdy and all work surfaces like must be impervious to chemical use. A uh, lab shall have a minimum aisle clearance of at least 90 centimeters. Aisles used for emergency, I guess, must have a clearance of at least 90 centimeter. Lab benches and other furniture must have a minimum clearance of 90 centimeter. Lab desks should have, uh, should have a located near S exits and in the path of make fresh makeup air. Lab benches will have a clear clearance of 150 centimeters. So it, it means that uh, uh, 90 and 150 centimeters are the standard clearances that we should uh, uh, follow in case that if there are people working back to back or, or two benches uh, in front of one another, the distance of uh, the edge of one bench should be at least 150 centimeter or 1.5 meters. So cleanability, the laboratory must be designed so that it can be easily cleaned and walls should be painted with washable hand and porous paints and space between benches and cabins and equipment must be accessible for cleaning. Spaces between benches and cabins and equipment must be accessible uh, for for cleaning. As you can see, this the benches are all uh, movable uh, under counters. So this has this has ball caster uh, wheels, and it can be moved. It can be located in, in the middle, or it can be so that we can clean uh, what's beneath this uh, table. You know? So these are the different. These are the standard. Uh, uh, distances of biosafety cabinets to uh, walls, to adjacent columns, distance of biosafety cabinet in front of another biosafety cabinet, a distance of a biosafety cabinet facing each other, 1.2 inches, 120 inches, facing uh, behind a door, 60 inches. So these are the standards that you will be using if you will be designing a biosafety cabinet inside the laboratory. So these standards are came from a uh, uh, NIH uh, guidelines. So this is a laminar flow hood. So this is a similar. P this is similar to a PCR machine, PCR hood. So these are laminar cabinet or lap or flow hood or tissue culture hood is a carefully enclosed bench. No, uh, uh, for biological samples, wafers, or any particle sensitive materials, it is drawn down to a HEPA filter and blown very smoothly. A laminar flow towards the user. So this is a clean bench so, so the, the this is protection of uh, materials no? so everything that is being done inside this cabinet is being protected by HEPA filters so there is a clean air blowing to the uh, uh, the, the, the the biological samples or anything that you are doing inside this cabinet the laminar flow cabinet or laminar flow closet or tissue food hood clue culture food so these are the transport containers of the COVID-19 uh, uh, samples or, or uh, uh, samples that were taken from uh, individuals. So as you can see, it's, it's on uh, inside a tube and then uh, inside a tube is inside a uh, Ziploc. The a Ziploc is inside a container, which is a plastic container with biohazard sign. And inside this plastic container, it's inside a uh, another container, which is a, a freezer, an ice chest, or a, uh, it's a something that, that protects the, the temperature of the sample. So this is the biohazard boxes and uh, trash bins or containers of biohazards. No? So as you can see, the trash bins are double uh, uh, packed with biohazard signs, and there are different uh, containers for different biohazards. So for, for emergency eye wash and safety showers, emergency eye wash and safety showers location shall be identified with high visible signs. So the areas around the eye wash and or shower shall be well lighted and highly visible. And the floor immediately beneath the emergency eye wash and shower and the radius of between the between about is 12 to 30 inches shall be distinctive pattern and color to facilitate promoting a clear path access. In this case, uh, this was taken this picture was taken before the the uh, the, uh, the certification of this laboratory. So right now there is a tape showing the safe the, the unsafe area or the safe area surrounding this eye wash shower station. So there is a tape, uh, a yellow tape now. Uh, 
and this picture was taken before that yellow tape. So electrical apparatus and telephone thermostats or other power outlets should not be located 18 inches or of the side of emergency shower and eye wash. So there should not should there should be the, the, the outlet or switches should be at least 18 inches away from the emergency shower. So as you can see, the, the, the switch is very far from the emergency shower. It's at, I think it's at least two, more than two meters away from the emergency shower, so it's very safe. And uh, this is the uh, flow of uh, workers inside the, the uh, flow of work inside the uh, testing laboratory, as you can see that the the doning and there should be a doning and doffing area for the before entering the lab. And uh, the the specimens no are usually enters this uh, this is the this this the people usually enter the space the people inside the specimen receiving entering receiving room uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, receives the samples. No? It, they receive the samples and it, the people uh, giving the sample does not enter the specimen receiving room. The people going to the specimen receiving room which is, which is negative pressure, there is a person inside the receiving room no? and that person inside the receiving room receive the specimen from the specimen receiving. So there is a pass box no, from this specimen receiving going this to this specimen receiving room. And this specimen sample preparation room also has a pass box passing the specimen to the specimen sample room. And there's also a PCR room and there's also a pass box going to this specimen, the specimen to the PCR room. So the people that are, do you, uh, the people that are working uh, to this in this area are entering separately on specific doors. This means that people working in the PCR are not the same people that are working in the specimen sample preparation. There are specific persons that are working on the specimen receiving. There are specific persons that are working on the reagent prep. So those people are working on specific areas. They are not transferring from one area to another area. Uh, supervisors are only walking on the hallways, looking at the doors and looking into people that are walking inside. Okay, so the write-up room is outside the laboratory and this write-up room is where all the data are being encoded and printed and sent to, sent to the agencies that need the results. People that are going out from this negative pressure room, the neutral room, positive pressure room, will go to the doffing area. No, we'll go to the doffing area and they will remove their PPEs. So the COVID-19 testing workflow, as you can see, I've seen this, uh, I've explained this before. These are the specimen receiving area. Specimens are being received at this area and it, it's transferred to the sample preparation. In the sample preparation, it is now be given to the template addition. In this template addition, the reagent are now being mixed with the with the specimen, and then it is being pushed to the PCR room via a uh, pass box. And then the result is now after the PCR room run the test, it, the result will be given to the write up room. So this is the workflow of specimens inside the laboratory. So. As you can see in this, the red area shows that these specimens are being handled on this red area. When they enter this area, this template addition room, this is an area where the specimen is being added, where the reagent is being added to the specimen. Okay? So another, this is another, this is the manpower workflow. So as you can see, I explained this earlier, people from the doning room, will go to the sample space specimen receiving room. People from the doning room will go to the space sample sample preparation. From the doning room will go to the PCR room and then they will go out, they directly go to the doffing room. So the doning and the doffing room are separate rooms. 
Okay? So these are all separate rooms. You cannot doff on the same room. No? So, on the right side is the workflow of the people that are working on the positive or the, the areas that are not that critical. So these are the template addition and the reagent preparation. So this is a sample of the result that was uh, uh, provided to DOH. Uh, from a Finnish uh, laboratory. This result shows the area of each lab and the room height, the volume, air exchange, the volume of air in few, uh, and the air volume, and the TOR and the return air, and then the exhaust air, the fresh air and the room pressurization. So these are all tables that are being given to Department of Health for you to comply with the, the requirements that they need. So these are samples of, uh, this is a sample of a PCR room in which PCR machines are inside. So this is a PCR machine. This is a sample of a refrigerator. This is a sample of a low, ultra low freezer. That is a requirement for, for PCR room. So as you can see, these are the ultra low freezers. These are the PCR machines. These are the specification of humidity, temperature inside a PCR room. Okay, so this is a sample of a negative room, which is a PCR negative room under construction. So this is when the, the PCR machine was not yet uh, installed, no? So this is uh, the sample of a PCR room where laboratory furniture are being installed. So this is the supplier of the laboratory furniture. This is the general contractor design general contractor and consultant of the 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 laboratory the covid lab this is a negative pressure room with uh with the as you can see these are the chairs that are being uh, that will be using in the negative some of this equipment are not for this room but these are these were all stored in the negative pressure room these are installed in the pcr room because we we finished the pcr room first before uh uh uh, before finishing at the room. So this was the first room that was finished, the PCR room. <clears throat> that is why the equipment were, were temporarily stored, stored in this room. So this is the template addition room. This is besides the PCR room. So you can see the PCR cabinet is beside the, the this, is, this is the PCR cabinet, which will be uh, handling the, the, the uh, PCR uh, additions of uh, PCR and the um, uh, what you call this, the samples. And this is the uh, refrigerator, the mini huge. So these are the requirements inside this template addition room. And this is the reagent preparation where you will uh, prepare the, the, the reagent. So these are the refrigerator. This is for mixing of the reagent. This is the freezers for the reagent. And this is the PCR cabinet in which you will mix the reagent before passing it to the uh, uh, template addition room. So this, is, this room on top is the template addition room. So we have here the uh, specimen receiving room. This is a space where the specimen is being received. So this is the uh, negative pressure. This is a negative pressure room. It has a biosafety cabinet class two type A2 or B1. So it has a vortex mixer, centrifuge, fast box, a computer, the pipette, and the pipette tips. So these are the, this is a 
a sample of a flow of a, uh, what you call this layout of a specimen receiving room. There has two, two biosafety cabinet. Beside the biosafety cabinet is a utility sink. And uh, there is what you call a autoclave here and some equipment like that. As you can see, there is a distance of 1.37 meters. Uh, we are requiring at least 9, 90 centimeters if there is one biosafety cabinet facing another. Since this is not a an area which is heavy traffic, so and people that is working here is the same people that is working here. He's just turning his back on this side. So 1.37 is, uh, is uh, acceptable. But if there is a biosafety cabinet here, this is not an acceptable distance. Should be 1.5 meters. So this is another one. This is a specimen handling preparation room. So this is where the separation of the RNA is being done. So this is the specimen handling prep room. So this is the uh, extraction of the RNA is being done. So the other room is the, inac the inactivation cabinets. No. So this is the uh, PC. They, they are. These are the equipment inside this uh, room. They have a computer, the uh, micro centrifuge, pipette tips, vortex mixer, and these are some of the equipments. No? This is the donning room in which people will be uh, uh, putting on PPEs. Okay, so you have a sink, a pass-through locker, and a cabinet for the PPE cabinet. So if you go out, this is the doffing room. So you can get your things that you uh, stored in the locker, then you can go out uh, upon doffing, you know, upon removing your PPEs. So uh, this is the specimen receiving area in which the specimen or the, the biohazard plastic bugs are being received. And these are, this biohazard is being encoded here uh, by a computer, they encode the, sometimes there's a barcoder that uh, collects the data uh, on each bug and then they, it is passed through on this box, no, the the bugs are passed through on this box, and this this area it, it directly connects connects to the first negative pressure room. <clears throat> this is another write up room in which all the the uh, datas are collected and printed and transferred to uh, other uh, hospitals or the Department of Health. No? In cases that people will, they need the result, this is the place they will get the result. So this is the bubble diagram of a uh, uh, RT-PCR COVID testing laboratory in the Philippines. You can see that these are the doning and doping areas. A, there is a, a room that connects it to a specimen sample preparation room, specimen receiving room, and a specimen receiving area. So people will go to this ante room and then they will go inside this area. So this is the connecting uh, space from the doffing to this three area because this three area people should prepare PPE. So people wearing PPE are connected to the should go to the PCR room and then they can go to the this area with the PPE they can go to reagent prep and template addition. So this is also a write up room. So as you can see these are connected spaces. A specimen is connected to specimen receiving. It's connected to the specimen sample preparation. Template addition is connected to the reagent preparation. And template addition is connected to the PCR room. So template is connection connected to one, two, three. Say specimen receiving is connected to two bubbles. Okay, so this is the main bubble. The main bubble is now uh, uh, can be created. To, it, it can be... Uh, uh, made into a plan. So this is a sample of a plan issued by the Department of Health, version 3.0. This is the uh, RT-PCL sample architectural design executed by the DOH. So as you can see, there is what you call a anteroom. The anteroom serves as the doning and doffing area. And this is the specimen receiving room. This is the area in which you can pass through and this is the doffing area this is the doffing area that is what this was designed by the doh no so this is the 
area when people don't hear, they can go to the specimen handling area. So it means that people that will go to the specimen receiving and specimen uh, uh, handling sample area will dove on this area. And if they will go out, they will dove on this area. Okay, so people that will work on the reagent prep tempered template addition and the PCR will don on this area and they will exit and doff on this area and they will exit on this area. So this will be the doffing area for this area and this will be the doffing area for this area and they will all meet on this corridor. So this was designed by the Department of Health. Uh, all of the items, all of the rooms that were this, that, that are here were previous previously discussed on our previous slide. So as you can see, they have two biosafety cabinets on this uh, plan and a PCR machine room with one PCR machine. Okay, so this is the, they have two biosafety cabinet and one PCR machine for the version 3.0. I think you can put more biosafety cabinet. You can move this here and then put one biosafety cabinet here. You can move you can put one more biosafety cabinet here. No? So this can be expanded into two biosafety cabinet and two PCR machines. So this, this layout. Uh, but you need to uh, refer on the widths of this, uh, the width of each room. Because if you will be following the three meters, you need to follow the three meters width. So this is the this is a COVID-19 laboratory which we designed for uh, an agency in the Philippines. No? So as you can see, the extraction room, the extraction room is one room. No? We don't have a, sam a sample receiving in a sample prep. It's all in one room. The extraction room is all in one room. And we have the template addition, and this is the, the preparation, the sample prep, and then and the end of the preparation of the reagent, reagent preparation. And then this is the PCR machine room. So these are the PPE room. You, you enter here you know, and then you go to the PPE room and there is a partition here, a invisible partition, uh, invisible uh, line, uh, not invisible, a, a yellow line that separates the doning and the doffing area. So after the doffing, you can go inside here and take a shower and then go out. This is another fire exit going out of the laboratory. So we have four PCR machines, one, two, three, four PCR machines, two biosafety cabinets, and this is the picture of the laboratory when it was finished. So this is the two biosafety cabinet, we uh, we decided to put it back to back and close these windows at the back because previously those windows were open and then they closed it so that they can position the uh, hoods or the, the biosafety cabinets uh, beside each other. So this is the, the PCR machine room. These are the emergency shower. This is the pass box for the template addition room. And this is the exterior of the existing building. So this is a, this was an existing building renovated to be a COVID laboratory. Okay, so this is a case that the design of the DOH was uh, modified to fit a specific room. So this was modified and the modification was created and a approval, an approval from the DOH was secured. This is another a plan of a COVID laboratory version two. No, this is this version two was derived from the uh, of the DOH uh, laboratory design. This was derived from the laboratory design of the DOH. As you can see, there were certain expansion and modification of the rooms compared to the DOH design. So this is the uh, rooms were widened. Rooms were also made longer to accommodate equipments. So this, this is what I'm telling you that you can modify the DOH laboratory to fit your need, to fit your specific uh, uh, requirements, okay? So as you can see, they required two biosafety cabinet, 
the DOH only provided one biosafety cabinet. So these are all modifications. And we also modified distances of room so that we can create a more uh, safe area for people to work, not too crowding because one of the principle that we should avoid, one of the, is the, the uh, uh, factors that should we, we should avoid is overcrowding inside the laboratory. So giving proper setbacks or, or distances between equipment with this will uh, prevent overcrowding. So we have two PCR machines and two biosafety cabinets for this laboratory. So this laboratory is, is, on, is, is already finished. It's being used by the uh, uh, government for uh, testing uh, the government employees. So this is another version three of the laboratory. This is also a laboratory for a government agency. This is another uh, modification of the version two. Uh, as you can see, we provided two biosafety cabinets here and another two biosafety cabinets here. So this is modification of MOBO version two uh, of our design. So this is the version uh, four that we designed. This is a container van type version. So as you can see, we will be using uh, uh, several container vans to create this laboratory. So as you can see, they have a version four, which as you can see, we have five PCR, PCR machine, two biosafety cabinets in the specimen receiving, two biosafety cabinets in specimen handling, and this is the version four. Then we created the version five. We decided to, because we made a version one that the sample receiving and sample prep are in one room, we decided to create a version four in which sample receiving and sample handling is in one room. So this is the version four of our, the version five of our uh, laboratory design. So the version five shows that five B BSC are in one uh, row and there is what you call a work table you know, for uh, the equipments. The doning area and the doffing area is on one side and there is another doning and doffing area on this side because these are all supposedly clean rooms. No? Although it's negative, but the viruses are all inactivated on this room. So, so one, one room is a negative pressure. This one is a negative and this one is, and this one is a negative pressure. This is a neutral pressure. Room. So these are five, four biosafety cabinets and these are four PCR machines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven PCR machines. And we have two piece reagent prep to make the uh, uh, to have more results in a day. So we we put two 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 PCR hood and one and this is the zones. No, these are all negative pressures. These are all uh, neutral and positive pressure rooms. And this is the workflow of people. Okay, so this is this is one sample of uh, a this is a sample of a modified you know, uh, uh, version five, and the write up room was is in another container container van. It's a write up room, and we provided storage and changing cubicles and toilets for people that will work inside the laboratory because uh, people will not use their street clothes when they enter the laboratory. They will remove their street clothes, put on a scrub suit, and then go inside the laboratory. Or sometimes they work, they go to the work using the scrub suit, and after the work, they remove the scrub suit, and then they change this on the changing room. This is the changing room where they change from the scrub suit to street clothes. So this is the sample of the container van type 
uh, COVID laboratory. So these are this one container. These are different uh, container vans. Uh, I think this is three container vans for the this laboratory. So this is the elevation of a container van laboratory. This is the uh, uh, half made. This was not yet finished. This is uh, uh, during construction. So as you can see there are a lot of uh, uh, debris outside and there are unfinished work. Um, and this is the inside of the laboratory, the, the unfinished laboratory. As you can see, they, 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 uh, they uh, replaced the, the laboratory with a automated, the, they replaced the biosafety cabinet with one automated uh, machine. So uh, these are all CCTV cameras, if not yet installed. So this was, picture was taken during the, uh, the construction, okay? So, uh, so our, our, our philosophy in creating uh, this laboratory, we should create a dynamic rather than an aesthetic environment. So in laboratory, you need to consider the, the how people work and sec the aesthetic will only come secondary. But you can design laboratories that are beautiful. No? As seen in the picture, these are all our designs in different part of the Philippines, and they are they look uh, uh, not that that uh, aesthetic, but it's it's not. Uh, you can see that it's not made. You no, know, it's it's carefully made to create an environment that people will 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 uh, will uh, be motivated while working. You know? So in creating a environment or a laboratory that, uh, that, are, uh, that will make people happy while working inside the, the space. 